Hey everyone, real treat for you today. I've got a game between Richard Retty and Alexander Alekhine, played in the year 1925. But first, big shout out to Amos Drac, who recommended this game. Uh, I've gone through it already, it's quite uh, an amazing uh, piece of chess history, this one. Um, and we're just going to look at it from Alekhine's perspective, who was playing black in this game, Retty was playing white, and I'll just get straight into it and get to the good bit. Uh, so g3 was played by Retty, and then e5 was played, knight to f3, and we get a reversed uh, Alakine. So I don't know if Retty was trolling here, uh, but Alakine now plays e4, hits the knight, knight goes to d4, then there's d5, d3, takes, takes, knight to f6, bishop to g2, and then black throws in a check, white blocks, there's a trade, and then now... Castles by Alakine, c4 from Retty and knight to a6, c takes d5, wins a pawn for white temporarily because now Alakine can just play knight to b4 which hits the queen, queen c4, and recapture the pawn on d5, equal material once again, and Retty played knight to b3, and then there was c6 from black to support the d5 knight, white now castled, Rook e8 is played, hits the e2 pawn, which is still protected by the d4 knight, as we can see here. Also protected by the queen, so there's not really a real threat, but it's good to get your pieces on open files. Retty played rook f to d1. And now Alakine puts some pressure on this e2 pawn, plays bishop to g4. Uh, rook d2 protects it, and then queen c8 is played. Uh, basically now this queen links up with this bishop very nicely, preparing to play move h3 and undermine his bishop on g2. But it gets very weird in a sec. So knight c5 is played by Retty. Alakine plays bishop h3, but then Retty dodges with bishop f3. And then there's a bit of a back and forth here. So bishop g4, bishop g2, back again, back again, until Retty now played bishop to h1, retreating the bishop all the way back, and then h5 was now played. So basically what black wants to do is bust open white's position, play h4 here, Sack a pawn. I mean, black would be very happy for white to take if uh, black does manage to play h4. First, though, b4 was played, supports the knight on c5 by white. a6 is played to stop any b5 ideas. Rook c1 from Retty, and now Alakine does proceed with his attack. Just plays h4. And the point is now, if you're playing with the white pieces, you never want to take a pawn like that. Because if g takes h4 here, then black can play knight f4 and has moves like knight h3 here. And the king for white has just been opened up really nicely and it's going to be very easy for to infiltrate and attack that king. So going back after h4 from black, um, Bretty just played a4 instead. So both sides are attacking on opposite sides of the board. Black now plays h takes g3, may as well, gets rid of a defender. Pawn takes g3 is played, and now queen c7. And white goes in for the kill on this queen side already with b5. So this is quite nice for white already. Basically what white's doing is if, uh, let's say black takes, which is what happened in the game, a takes b5, a takes b5. So a trade occurs, black gains the open a file. However, now this c6 pawn is really under fire. You've got a pawn here, a knight's coming in, and also this uh, queen and rook barrage on the c file. But this is where it gets very interesting. Alakine played uh, a very interesting, incredible move here. Rook e3. Um, this looks absolutely crazy, but it works. Point being is, after rook e3, if white takes f takes e3, the point is it leads to mate. The queen takes g3. The king is absolutely uh, exposed here. Bishop g2. And black can play knight takes e3. So queen takes g2, is threatened with mate, and there's literally no way to stop it. The best given by the computer is a delaying queen takes f7, king takes, knight takes, and then just queen takes g2, is mate. So white definitely can't take the rook. The best move given here is actually bishop to f3 for white, so Retty should have played this. And after takes, e takes, uh, c takes b5, knight takes b5, Queen to a5, which hits the d2 rook. Uh, white can play rook c to d1. And after takes an f3, knight to b3, and then queen to d8, we get into a rather uh, interesting and double-edged position. 
the knights for both sides actually are harassing uh, their opponents. Uh, knight d4 here attacking the rook. Rook takes f2, rook takes f2, and black can play knight to e3 here. After queen d3 takes, takes, we get into this end game. So black's actually two pawns up, but um, is actually a piece down. So maybe white's doing slightly better in this position, but it's probably going to end up in a draw. It's very hard to see how white might win this. But um, yeah, it was quite interesting variation. I and mean, White should have probably played bishop to f3 here. Instead though, Reti played knight to f3, and this gives black the advantage. Because after c takes b5, which attacks the queen, white's forced to take. And now Alakine plays another attacking move, knight to c3. Gives the queen no respite. And obviously white can't afford to take, because then the rook just recaptures and black's just the exchange up. So after knight c3, queen takes b7 is played. There's a trade of queens, queen takes b7, knight takes b7, and at the end of this little variation, Alakine can play knight takes e2 with check, forking the uh, king and the rook at the same time. So Ressi continued, king h2. I think a normal player here would just bail out with knight takes c1, but not Alakine. He now played uh, the incredible knight e4. So now two knights are attacking both rooks. And I looked at a move like rook to b2 here, but then black just gains the advantage with knight takes f2, which is actually what happened in the game. Reti played rook to c4, so moving his rook away from the knights on e2. Uh, but now just comes knight takes f2, protecting the bishop on g4. I think knight takes d2 was also interesting, but then white can play knight takes d2 as well. The rooks are sacking the bishop on g4, the pawns sacking the rook. And after bishop e6... F takes rook, rook to a2. We get into a rather interesting position. The rook's attacking the knight on d2, which is protecting the rook on c4. Also, the rook on c4 is attacked. The computers give knight to d8 as the best move. I don't think a human player would maybe find that. It's very difficult to see. Uh, the point being is that you can bail out with rook takes d2, knight takes e6. Knight f4, discovered check. King g1, knight takes e6. Uh, probably a drawn game. Going back a few moves as well, after knight to d8, there's also bishop takes c4, knight takes c4, and again, knight to f4, king g1. We get into an interesting double-edged position. Basically, white has a knight and the bishop for the rook in this position. So, obviously, the previous variation was probably better for black, but still, it was rather interesting. Let's go back to the game, though. So, after rook c4, knight takes f2 was played, protects the bishop on g4, bishop g2 from Reti. And now bishop to e6, attacking the rook on c4, which drops back to c2. Now two rooks are eyeing up this knight on e2. By the way, don't worry if you're so confused by this game, because it's very complicated. But just enjoy the ride. Alakine played knight g4 check. And I've highlighted two key squares here. These are the only two squares that the king can go to. And one of them leads to checkmate, and the other one leads to some sort of safety. So in the game, king h3 was played, which is the correct move. But uh, if king h1 here, white gets mated with rook to a1, check, and after bishop f1, only move really, rook takes f1 with check, king g2. Uh, the knights and the rooks do a delicious job, rook f2, check, king h1, and just rook takes f3, threatening rook h2, checkmate. So this forces white to take on e2, but anyway, now black can just play rook h2, check. The point being is if rook takes h2, there's rook f1 check, king to g2, and knight to e3, believe it or not, is checkmate. Also after this rook to h2, if the king just sidesteps, again just rook f1, king takes f1, and rook h1 check, king g2 is the only move, and then there's a nice mate here, I wonder if you can find it. The correct move here is actually just bishop to d5 with check. Uh, rook e4 is the only move, and then bishop takes e4 is checkmate. So amazingly, king h1 loses here. So for this reason, Reti played king h3. Knight e5 check was played. The king went back to h2, and Alakine took on f3. Rook takes f3. If the bishop takes, then white loses due to knight takes f3. King to g2. Knight takes d2. And rook takes d2, where black is a whole piece up. 
So after rook takes f3 in the game, rook takes e2 was played, so gets a knight back. However, this just wins for black now. This is a very nice combination, just knight g4 check. Again, if the king goes back to g1 or h1, the rook on the a-file will drop into a1, deliver some checkmate ideas. So king h3 is played. And now there's a discovered attack. Knight to e3 with the bishop, bearing down the king with check. King goes to h2. Knight takes c2 is played. Bishop takes rook. And knight to d4. Hits the bishop and the rook at the same time. And in this position, Reti actually abandoned the game and resigned. Why did he resign? Because after rook to f2, Alakine could have played knight takes with check. And after rook takes, they've got this nice bishop to d5, attacking the rook and the knight at the same time. And the rook can't protect the knight because the bishop also covers b3. If we just go back before he resigns, uh, after knight d4, the best move here is actually just rook takes e6, followed by knight takes e6. And at least um, white's got two pieces versus two pieces, but here's a pawn and exchange down. So after knight d4, I think it's correct that white resigned the game here. But yeah, what else can I say about this game? That was absolutely an incredible game by Alakine. Obviously my favorite move in this game was the rookie free, uh, which was just insane here. Rookie free right here. I don't think many players would have seen this in the history of the game, to be honest. But anyway, I'll drop the notation in the description. I'll also link to the game if you want to check it out yourselves. It's very interesting. Best to go through it um, with a hot cup of tea or something and just analyze it. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. And again, shout out to Amos Drac. I really hope I'm saying your name right uh, for telling me about this game. Anyway, see you next time.